Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be doing something crazy. Take a complex number and raise it to another complex power. So we have one minus square root of three times I to the power I, and we're gonna simplify this. Now, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I went over basics of complex numbers and ask questions all the time. If you like trigonometry, number theory, and algebra, I have another channel called Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. Go ahead and check it out and let us know if you have any questions. Great, so let's get started. We have this complex base and the complex, or maybe call it imaginary exponent. And how do we simplify something like this? So whenever you're given a real number to a real power, things are usually easy. Obviously, in the case of two to the power square root of three, it's not that easy, but let's look at some simpler examples first. For example, what is two to the third power? It's writing the two three times and multiply, that gives you eight. Great, what about five to the power one half? Well, it just means the square root of five, because if you take two of those and multiply together, you get five, which is one half plus one half equals one. Make sense? So, and with negative exponents, we have a definition. What happens if the exponent is zero, like five to the power zero, that is one. What about zero to the power zero? There's a huge discussion about this, but don't worry, I made it clear. Zero to the power zero is equal to one. If you wanna find out, go ahead and check out my video. I also share the link in the description down below. All right, so these are easy cases. What about something like three to the power square root of two? Doesn't look that easy, does it? Because first of all, we have an irrational exponent. And in that case, we can't really write this as a radical because we do need a rational exponent. And square root of three isn't rational. So the best we can do, and probably the only thing we can do is, and this is by the way, a transcendental number, which is an interesting category of irrational numbers like e or pi. So, I think so, right? Is that? Well, at least we know it's irrational. But here's what you can do. You can approximate square root of 2. For example, square root of 2 is between square root of 1 and square root of 4, right? So you can kind of write it as 1 and 2. Of course, you can get narrower and narrower, like something like 1.4 something something. And then, so if let's say the square root of 2 is less than 1.5, right? Yeah? Absolutely, because this is 1.4 something. So we can safely say that 3 to the power root 2 is less than 3 to the power 1.5. And this has a good definition. This is well defined. How? Well, 3 to the power 1 half means 3 to the power 3 halves. And you can write this uh, either as the square root of 3 to the third or the square root of 3 and the 3 is on the outside. Same thing. Okay? And this is 3 root 3. Since we kind of know what root 3 is, we can kind of look at that too. So, yes, we have a good, good idea. At least we can approximate it. But with the case of complex numbers, what is i to the power i? By the way, I also made a video about this. You can check it out. And did you know that i to the power i is... Wait a minute. Let me not say that. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Go ahead and check it out. Now, let's go back to this. We have 1 minus root 3i to the power i. So how do you raise a complex number to an imaginary power. Let's go ahead and find out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and rewrite the problem. And then we're gonna go back to the definition of a complex exponential. In other words, how does complex exponentiation work? And here's how it works. If you have z to the power w, where z and w are both complex numbers, by the way, real numbers are also complex numbers, but we usually call them real numbers. This applies to them as well. But z to the w, can be written as e to the power w ln z. Great, but you also need to talk about ln z because how do you find the net log of a complex number? In other words, the complex logarithm. And most books will write it as log, but I also found some resources that use the notation, notation ln. That's why I'm kind of sticking to that one, okay? So ln z, is ln of absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. So uh, kind of in a nutshell, that's what the formula is. But argument of z can be written in infinitely many ways. 
because you are allowed to add 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi to it. And theta is usually representing argument. So basically, in other words, I'm trying to say that if z can be written as r times e to the i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value of z, then this implies ln z equals ln r plus i theta, which is a nicer way of writing things, right? Don't you think? Thus, we have all these special names or notations. Now, with that, we can come up with a formula, something that looks like this, w times ln r plus i theta. So what we need to do is theta, we got to remember, is the argument of z, and r is the absolute value of z. And z is the base. So got to be careful about it, not to ln the absolute value of the exponent, but the base. Okay, let's go ahead and try to apply this to our problem. Okay, so we have 1 minus root 3i to the power i. So z is 1 minus root 3i, right? So that's our z, and our w is i. Great. So this should give us e to the power w, which is i, multiply by ln r, what's the absolute value of z? You probably know that it's 2, because if you think about the 30, 60, 90 triangle, that's what it is. Or you can graph it or plot it. 1 minus root 3i is going to be something like this. And guess what? This is going to make, because it's in the, uh, you know, fourth quadrant, real and imaginary, like this. And it's going to make a 60 degree angle, but it's negative 60 degrees. Make sense? So it's basically going to be i times negative pi over 3. Obviously, there is more than one way to write it. You can add 2 pi to it, which will make it 5 pi over 3, but I'd like to stick to the principal argument, which is this one. Great. So are we done? Not yet, because we still have to simplify this. And how do you simplify that? Best way to do it is just distribute. So let's go ahead and simplify inside the parentheses first. We're going to put a minus sign here, and then we're going to distribute. And when we do, we're going to get e to the power i ln 2. And one thing to remember, uh-oh, I forgot to talk about it, but again, it's in the lecture notes. i squared is negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1. And did I tell you 0 to the power 0 is 1? But that's another story you don't have to worry about right now. So if you distribute this, you're going to get i squared, which is a negative. Double negative will make a positive, not like English. English is different, but this will give us pi over 3. Awesome, you can leave it at that because you know ln2. Wait a minute, but what is e to the power i times something, right? That's bring, that brings us, not to the end of this video, stick around, but it brings us to Euler's formula. Why? Because Euler is awesome. He's the best. So he came up with a beautiful, beautiful formula, which gave us the most beautiful equation in math. And this is what it is. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. How nice. You kind of bring together trigonometry, imaginary numbers, you know, arithmetic, exponentiation. How beautiful that can get, right? There's nothing that can beat it. Maybe in the future, who knows, right? Another Euler can come up and, and bring us a beautiful, another beautiful formula. Anyway, so this is Euler's formula, and we're going to apply it here. But how do we apply it? Well, we need to take this thing and rewrite it here so we can kind of use some room, plus pi over 3. Now, one thing we should do is, first of all, separate the real and imaginary parts, because this is like e to the power a complex number. It's like super complex, right? So let's go ahead and separate them. e to the power i ln 2 times e to the power pi over 3. Exponentials behave nicely. Now, here's the part you should focus on, because this is where you apply Euler's formula. Now, in this case, theta is ln 2, which is kind of weird, but just you know, that's what it is. So e to the power i ln 2 will be cosine of ln 2, whatever that number is. And you got to remember, these should be in radians. Times plus, I mean, i times sine of ln 2. But wait a minute, this is just the e to the power part. Of course, this should be multiplied by e to the power pi over 3. But pi over 3. Now, you can distribute it if you want and write it as e to the power pi over 3 times cosine of ln 2 plus i times, I don't know if you want to write this first or the other one, I guess I'll use the exponent first, and trigonometry next, and 
you can basically write this as follows. What is e to the power of pi over 3? Again, that's an irrational number, probably transcendental, but use a calculator. And guess what happens at the end? You're able to write this as a plus bi, which is, by the way, the name of this channel. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus PI and bye-bye.